In this video, we'll first see how to create hex files in Code Composer Studio, and then we'll download and install the MSP430 Flasher command line tool. Then we'll use it to flash hex files to the MCU and also read the memory sections from it. Later on, we'll compare the hex file created by the CSS and the file read from the MCU and understand the structure of the internal hex file format. Finally, we'll see how to secure the code on the device by the utility. First thing that we will do is right click on our project and click on properties. Then we will enable the hex utility from this hex utility section. We enable it. And then you can choose your output format. For this example, I'm going to choose the Intel X format. And you can look at the other options as well. And then we will click on apply and close. And once we click on build, you will see your hex file either in the release or the debug folder according to your choice. So once you right click and click on properties for your hex file, you see its location. And when you click on this icon, you will go to that in the explorer window and that is your hex file. Now let's download MSP430 Flasher. We will go to TI's website and we will see this MSP Flasher command line programmer. This is a screenshot of it on the command window. And here it says you can order the MSP FET. However, we are going to be using our own launchpad with this software. So once you click on the software link, you will see the releases. We will see and download the latest release. So you can click on this link here, installer.zip. Here it will ask you for your username and password, so you provide them and download it from there. Once you download it and extracted the zip file, you can double click on the file to open the installer. And we are going to click on next. Then we will accept the agreement and click on next once again. I chose the default folder. You can choose another folder if you'd like. And click on next to continue with the installation. Here it says to download the USB FAT drivers, but I don't need them because I already have CCS installed, so I skip that section. This is the MSP Flash's user guide. It's an 18 page document. Let's scroll down. You can see that this is an important topic loading a file to the microcontroller. And this is another important topic reading the device memory. So you can read the memory of the microcontrollers with this tool as well and you can save it to either a text file or you can save it to a hex file as well. On the right hand side you can see our setup that we had shown in our previous video programming external microcontrollers with the EasyFET debug pro and this is the folder that we have installed our MSP flasher program and let's clear the screen first and let's see the contents of it. You can see that I have loaded a couple of hex files for the microcontroller unit. And now we are going to flash that on the microcontroller unit on the breadboard. So we copy and paste this command, but there are two things that we will change. First, the file to be written to be loaded on the microcontroller. So it is this version 5.hex file. And I'm going to change the microcontroller unit family, which will be G2553. And I will leave these settings as they are. And I'm going to connect now my launchpad to my laptop. And you will see that the LEDs are on. The device has power. And I will hit return to give this command to the MSP flasher utility. And it starts doing some actions. You can see that it says, I found G2XX3 instead of G2553. And we write Y for yes. And the file is loaded. The drive is closed. So no problem is reported. So right now, our code is loaded on the microcontroller on this breadboard. Now let's see how we can read this device memory. So we change the output file name. I will name it v5red and I will make it a hex file, not a txt file, b5 
because I would like to compare it with the hex file that CCS has created. And again, I'm going to change the family G2553. And once I hit enter, you will see that it will again get the prompt for continuing for G2XX3. So the content, the main memory has been read and it's been written to this v5red.hex file. You can see it in the same folder. It's right here, v5red.hex. And you can compare that it's a bigger file than the file that our CCS has created. So let's open the content of this file and also the file, the hex file that CCS has created so that we can compare them. You can see that they have a different structure. Let's compare these two hex files on the left hand side, the file that is created by the CCS and on the right hand side, that was the file that was loaded, retrieved from the microcontroller itself. So. This website is from Intel showing the properties of the hex files. You can see an example file here with four lines only. And let's compare it with this one, the one that we read from the microcontroller. So we have a colon in the beginning. So that's the start of the record. Next two characters is the record length. So it's one zero in our file. So that is 16 bytes. Okay. And since we have two hexadecimal numbers indicating a byte we will have 32 characters here and this next four characters is the load address so it's starting from c000 and the next two characters is the record type so we have again 00 which is a data record and after that our data starts so we will have 16 bytes of data and at the end we have two characters which is the checksum okay we can calculate the checksum as well from this online calculator but be careful that we will use the whole characters except the checksum for sure and let's copy and paste it here and let's calculate the checksum so that's 8f which is matching with our file as well so let's try the second line too so let's copy and paste it here. So that's 5F. So the file seems okay. Okay. So we have the actual data and at the end we have the checksum. So this was the file created by the CCS. So let's try to compare these two. You can see that on the left hand side, the file created by the CCS has two zero, so 32 bytes on each line. And this file, as you can see, it doesn't have these FF sections, the file on the left hand side. And at the end, we have the same values starting from FFDE, which I will show you what that means, what memory section that corresponds to. And we can check that these sections are also the same. Okay. You will see that we start with two bytes on the left hand side however on the right hand side it's still 32 bytes and at the end you can check that the last line of this file is special as mentioned in this website so it's the same starting with a colon and ending with one ff so that's the end of the file so let's check the data sheet. So you'll see that for G2553 microcontroller, the code memory starts from G000 and ends at FFFF. So that's why we see that interval in the files as well. So, and the interrupt vector starts at FFFC0, sorry. And you can see that these sections are the same in both files. However, in the file that we read from the microcontroller, there is this section with all FFs, but we don't have that section in the file hex file created by the CCS. However, that doesn't mean a thing. So these two files are the same. So let's check the end of the code, which 
ends with, as you can see, 0, 2. And 0, C is the checksum, so don't include that. So to summarize these two files are the same. So it means that we can load this file on the right hand side to our microcontroller as well. Okay. And you can see these two files right here. Now let's load this red hex file to our microcontroller. We will change the name of the file for sure. This was the hex file created by the CCS. So let's clear this one and paste the v5 that v5 red dot hex file. And once we hit enter, we will again be asked to continue for gx 63 and it's been loading this v5 red hex file to our microcontroller and it's finished with no errors so if you don't want your code to be read from the microcontroller there is a way to do that securing the target device so blowing the jtag fuse is the method for this However, for the 1xx, 2xx, and 4xs families, this is a physical and irreversible action. So if you do that, the code will stay there and won't be able to read by anyone. However, you won't be able to access the device anymore as well. However, for the newer versions, there is this soft fuse or electronic fuse. So you can go back to the factory settings. The main memory will be erased and you will be able to reprogram the device. However, if you physically blow the JTAG fuse for the older versions, you won't be able to access the device anymore. So, so this is the output where you can see that the device is being accessed. However, it gets an error because it says the security fuse has been blown. So there will be no access to your code.